Okay, so recreating this effect from the Modo website uh, where we got the, they use the replicators in Modo. Uh, the replicators are pretty much the equivalent of points in Houdini, I would say. So, being that uh, I believe replicators actually point instances of the cubes over here. Now, we're gonna recreate the same effect. So, we got big cubes on the front, on the very front, and smaller cubes to the back and they got their in interpenetrate so there's no need to space them out or anything like that and what else can we see from this uh the scale down up and down of which uh that's gradients that as you know you suggest kind of think it will be so scaling them down so we're gonna recreate the whole thing from uh you know zero as usual houdini uh well let's get jumping into houdini and let's see whether we can actually get the same effect so let's get bumping and I got my little scene set up already so we're gonna go ahead and uh, jump in and start uh, dropping them notes down Cheer. okay so jumping into Houdini the well the object level a soft level we're gonna begin the whole thing by dropping in a font of which um, well default as usual change the level of detail a little bit that's really a matter of preference it just makes the whole thing a little bit smoother so if you actually drop it down you can actually see that just get you know smooth as you take it up so since we got the example from Modo we're gonna dedicate this to Modo so Modo right and we're gonna change the font to well that's the font that look how it looks right and we're gonna take off the center text vertically to make it kind of pop up and we're gonna scatter this um no 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 this ain't right that's supposed to be houdini right <laughs> gotcha so scatter the points of which I obviously doesn't work off the bat and let's change this font to something different something kind of cool i don't know who is cool but uh let's do georgia georgia girl georgia bold i would say and I think that looks good. Yeah, I'll really use that. Now we can scatter, but obviously it's scattering based on the primitive area and all, all that kind of uh, stuff. So we're gonna go ahead um, use a for each um, node over here. And essentially, what the for each do is does is actually iterate to whatever you got it set up to. So you can actually iterate to however many groups you got, whatever attribute it is, whatever number it is, or the primitive number or the point. So in our case, we want to use uh, primitives. So we're going to get for each primitive, going to double click on it to drop in. And for each primitive, what you actually want to go ahead and do is actually triangulate the mesh. So that way you get a final resolution um, thing. So you actually, if I put the template flag on that one, now you can see just subdivided the thing. and for one you actually need to put the constraint primitives to zero right here now if i go back up and actually look at this everything just got the whole thing you know replicated i mean um, divided so to speak triangulated by the uh for each node with the triangulate inside it so now you got the um the scatter swap scattering the points correctly now nice and dandy so we got 5,000 points of which uh, I think that should be a high for real so we can go ahead and uh, for one give the points a texture so we can drop a texture right before this or after this so it really don't matter it's all up to you uh, but sometimes the uh, the order of which you place the nodes is actually really important so right now we're just gonna give the points uh, an orthographic projection uh, in the now you need just you need to look at the axis. It cannot be on the y axis as a, as the default is right now, cause that's like from the top. So it really is just gonna stretch out your texture. So you actually need to put it out from this angle as a projection. So which in that case that's the z axis. You, all you need to do is just look over here in the bottom. And so we're gonna need to project it from the z axis. So z axis, and that's gonna project the texture onto it. Now the need for the texture is that we're gonna be using gradients eventually, so we need to tell the points exactly where the texture is, as, uh, uh, accordingly, relevantly to, relatively to where the point is. That's hence the need for um, 
a texture over here. Now we're gonna do all of this in VOPs. So VOPs, VOPs up. Of which this is not really essential as um as you know dropping VOPs up is really cool, of which you can actually drop the VOP network. VOP network and um create the node over here, create a uh, operator as a swap operator and I just drop it back up but I just find this swaps up much much more more efficient since it's already set up as a thing as a node so I just double clicked on it to enter the thing and now I'm gonna have to do some stuff for example for one we got UV data that's actually streaming in through the fast port that we just plugged in so we're gonna need to bring that data in now I'm gonna just maximize this by control B and what we're gonna do is actually just import attribute which is actually uh right here on the geometry so import attribute and i'm gonna go ahead and press p on my keyboard to bring up the parameter editor and okay for for the attribute that we want to bring in is actually uv as you can tell it's um small letters so we actually just need to put the small letters over here so uv is the data that we want to bring in and it's coming in from the fast port which is actually index uh, zero so it's a vector attribute vector meaning it has three values in it as you can tell from the three little bracketed uh, number over there so uv has three data flow um, values floating in it so floating values so what we need to do for one is actually break up the data from the vector to a flow component so we're gonna break it up and you can tell it's a three cause uh, the vector just broke it up into three little thingies of which is the XYZ or UVW in our case being that we're actually inputting the UV data right so the reason for the UV data is cause we're gonna be getting color maps we're gonna be using a color map so under utilities color map now a color map needs UV data, so hence the breaking up for the of, of the UVW into the components. So there we go. Those just plug in like so, and we're gonna need a texture map from file. Now we don't want to bring this in from the sort of op level. We're actually gonna promote this parameter. So a middle mouse click on this, middle mouse click, and promote parameter, of which is the same thing as um click coming over here, and, you know, promote parameter. So now once you go back up to the VOP level you have the same attribute over here now I'm gonna go back inside double click and now we got this color attribute coming in now for the color attribute what we're gonna try to get out of it is the luminance values out of it now luminance meaning it's gonna get the blacks and the whites and get all the values in between from 0 to 1 being that uh, obviously the colors just go from 0 to 1 black to white so 1 white black 0 so 0 to 1 so it's already a zero to one uh, ratio as it is, of which that's like the normalized data, so to speak. Uh, you know, graphically, they say. So that's nice and dandy. So the reason for actually getting this is that we're going to use this for the displacement of the points. Now, the point position, as you can see from right here, is a vector value also, and we actually need to, if actually maximize and maximize this and. Um, what we need to do is actually make these points go forward now if you actually look at the little um, axis thing over here on the bottom that's telling you the Z axis is actually going forward like so right so you got the Z axis going forward so what we need to do is actually work on the Z axis now one thing is the Z axis is in here which is a vector and but the Z axis is a float so we actually need to break the vector again into a float you need to break it down into the three components so in our, in this case you got the X Y and Z accordingly okay now we're gonna need to bind it back up because as you can tell you know how to put it back out now this is the output so this is whatever you manipulate in between you know here to bring it out here this is what you're gonna plug in for the point position right so we're gonna need to bind it back up so we're gonna use a float to vector of which you can tell that it just takes all the three floats and binds them back up to a vector right so the X and the Y remains the same cause what we need to change is actually the Z values right so we're gonna go ahead and plug in the output to the position over here okay so that's that's pretty much it for the whatever now it really doesn't change cause essentially I'm gonna go to the before we actually manipulate the data right right here on the UV texture I'm gonna right click on it and check on the spreadsheet 
now if i check on the z values even on the uh on the this is we're checking we're looking at the uv texture the node that we're looking at is the texture that's not the vops up everything is actually zero meaning even on the vops up being that the data is just streaming down everything is still zero so essentially this is zero and being that i never plugged in anything over here now if i drop in another flow to vector and actually i'm looking at flow to vector 2 right which is this one you can see that every data over here is zero and over here if i actually put this as a higher value you can tell that Houdini moves the VWAP, moves the uh, points across like so. Okay, so it's still zero. So now what we need to plug in for that is the luminance values from this one as the displacement, so to speak, of the of the points. Now the reason I it's actually displacing this is because it has a default texture, which is the mandrel pick, and that's the, you know, the uh, the guy, the mandrel pick guy. Now you can see he's actually displacing the points uh, as it is, but we're actually gonna have to create some, um, what you call it, uh, gradients for this. So essentially, it's actually working for us. And what you're gonna go ahead and do now is actually I'm gonna go ahead and delete these wraps up. Not essential. Is actually create the um, displacement for this now we're going to be using gradients for that now houdini houdini way the houdini way to do that is actually using under the managers you get a cop 2 network now this is actually what we're going to use to create the gradients so i'm just going to put it over here i guess and we're going to create call this um create gradients um right <laughs> if i can type so create uh, gradients right so now we're gonna actually work on this and try to get the gradients running with this now there um yeah let's do that 